All right, guys, so in the previous video, we fixed the ear that we have over on this side. Let's go ahead and finish up the rest of the head before we move on into the body. Uh, the rest over here is going to be a little more easier. So we'll just go ahead and rotate a few things, try to position them as close as possible. So using the same methods that we've done so far, we can use these points to rearrange once we've adjusted the peg. We don't want to move it too much to kind of break the whole structure that we had so far. And I can start doing the same thing with the head over here. So either reducing or boosting a little bit what we had so far. The head is already pretty much centered, so we don't really need to, uh, to change those values too much. We just need to make sure that we have a nice smooth transition between the two. And perhaps I'll move this up very slightly to adjust to the muzzle. Um, now, as for the little pieces of hair, that we have over on this side. I don't really want them to flip from one side to the other. Uh, we actually would like to have this uh, little piece over on this side to kind of remain there. Um, because if I transition into this one and have this piece kind of going into the body and appearing over on the other side, it's not gonna look so great. Um, so as for this one, we'll make an, a little exception. We'll take the front piece and leave it so that it acts as the back piece. And I'll do the same thing with the one that we have over here. Instead of bringing it over to the other side as we would into a regular rotation, we're just gonna have it stick out, stick back out uh, over on the side to, um, to act as if it were the front one. Um, so I try to not do this too often, but every now and then every rig has its own little things and to accommodate the design a little bit better, it's probably for the best that these pieces don't transition from one side to the other. So I'm going to keep this one on this side and just move it very slightly, try to reposition it in the right place and adjust using the deformation or each individual peg. Just like so, and we want to have a nice smooth transition between this piece and this one here. So I'm going to very slightly readjust the position I had made for the jaw. And now over on this side, as I mentioned, we want to have the other cheeks. So we have these over here. I'm going to move them with my peg first. Bring those back out. This one is pretty much already in the right position. I'm going to take this one and move it slightly using the peg and then readjusting with the deformation. I try to keep again this point merging into the pose of the head. So let's go ahead and bring that in a little bit more. And now we pretty much have the entire pose of the head. Let's actually nudge this up a little bit more not too much because we don't want it to look like uh, the character is growing a little bit taller. So now we have most of the head done. We kind of look at it this way. Uh, we'll want to start looking into creating the nose, the mouth, and the muzzle, bringing those to the back of the head. So right now I'm supposed to have something that looks like this. And what I have is this. So um, what I'm going to be doing is basically just taking 
the entire snout. So I have a peg that controls the muzzle and the nose. I'm going to nudge those to the back. And I can nudge it, uh, I can nudge it once, and that's gonna be enough for bringing this to the back. And we're going to position it pretty much in the right position. I'm going to scale the nose a little bit. I could create another drawing for this one. It's really up to you. Um, I think right now this one works pretty well for the intended purpose. And of course, I'm going to have the mouth as well. Now, if we look at what the mouth is going to be doing in this specific example, we're going to have it kind of turning over to the side, pretty much like the ear. Um, so we're going to want to scale that a little bit, nudge it uh, over to the side and eventually bring it to the back as well. So let's make sure that we select the mouth master peg um, because right now we don't have any lip sync. It doesn't matter too much, but we've already split all the different pieces for the mouth uh, for a later use. So let's make sure that we don't grab just the layer of the lips but the entire thing. All right, so we have our mouth master selected and we want to go over to our quarter front view, scale it down a little bit to make it look like it's going to, um, it's going to scale down. We try not to lose too much line quality, so don't scale it down too much. And then we can nudge it to the back using alt up arrow. And this gives me a little value. You can punch it in as well in your coordinates and control points. And now if I try to look at what's going on, we see that um, it is going to the back right away uh, over here because of the Z depth accumulation. Um, so we'll want to fix that in the center to do a breakdown position perhaps where the mouth will actually still appear and then move to the back of the character. So let's go ahead and try that. I'll just bring it to the back again and see if this is going to match pretty much the position that we want. I could scale it down a little bit more, perhaps nudge it to the side since it's being cut away by the rest of the body. So this is going to be the last position before we transition into having it at the back of our character. So from here, I've set my keyframe as I moved the position. I'll go to the next keyframe and just bring it to the back entirely so that we can start um, seeing the rest of the transition. So if that moves pretty smoothly, then it's all good. We can use that to, uh, to fix up the, uh, the mouth layer. We still have a few things that are acting up a little bit weird. Um, for instance, I have this little portion of the jaw that kind of looks a little bit funny. So we'll be able to fix those once we keyframe all of our uh, all of our items. Now I probably want to do a breakdown position for the eye. I'm going to select the eye full master and set down a keyframe over here. Um, I probably want to have a keyframe as well on the entire character right here because right now if I go and modify this one, it will be modified as well in here. So that is one of the most important steps. Once you've positioned your elements, make sure that you set a keyframe down on everything that you have here. If I just go here, set a keyframe, then at least I know that I have this entire pose here nailed down with uh, a keyframe at frame 40. Um, now, going back to the eye, just check the Eiffel master and on this one I am going to scale it down and perhaps skew it a little even to have the eye kind of appear as if it's turning. Now the other keyframe that I've set was full sized so if I want I can keep this size and copy it over 
to the next frame just to make sure that we have a nice uh, a nice even um, transition through uh, frame 35 to 40. I can even thin it out a little bit more in that frame that I don't really see because it's going to just keep on becoming thinner as we transition. Now this pose here doesn't look so nice. Of course at this particular frame I'll probably want to, the eye to be gone already and uh, disappear behind the rest of the face. I could make that even thinner if I want, skew it a little bit more, see how that looks when I transition. And then from this side we'll be able to adjust uh, every single piece as we rotate. So um, now at this point, we're pretty much okay for creating the transition of the face. If we look uh, at these little parts here, if it kind of looks like it's uh, coming out of nowhere, it's not too bad as we transition. You could have them uh, appear a little bit sooner if you wanted and have this middle position over here kind of selecting both pieces and bringing them out a little bit more. That would work as well or if it kind of looks like it's a, a little beard or something you could nudge them inside a little bit more uh, it's kind of tricky sometimes with these kinds of transitions uh, where you want to have some pieces appearing but doing so naturally so i think it makes a little more sense if we don't see them too soon um, so uh, this breakdown position here needs to make sense because it's going to be uh, the middle between those two poses, so uh, pro possibly one that we'll want to access more often, kind of like a regular breakdown. Um, the in-betweens need to look nice. Also, obviously, if we plan on using them uh, in the future, we want every single pose to look nice. Um, so let's just try and make the most of those. All right, so now that we have these, for the transition of the head, we may have a few more things that we need to fix. We'll have uh, the nose kind of cutting into this part of the mouth here. So I may want to nudge it on top just for a few frames. And then we have this part over here that kind of transitions funny. We'll be able to fix that as we keyframe down everything. We need to really make sure that most of the pieces look nice before we start getting into keyframing everything. Now, if I wanted to have a little transition for the hair right here before it starts popping to the back immediately, I may want to um, create another keyframe here. Perhaps the hair will move up a little bit just to give it a nicer silhouette and kind of look as if it's lifting up very slightly. And I may want to go back here, push it down and bring it up a bit just to make sure that it connects nicely and moves along with the rest, just like so. So these are all little things that you can do. Um, we'll finish up the head real quick over here. Once you're done with the head, just to make sure that we don't change anything as we do the, um, the rest of the body, make sure that you go and grab the head master peg. We'll go and find that in here and we'll just bake those keyframes using the create keyframes on, press okay, and do any further little adjustments that you need to do directly on those keyframes there using the methods that we've seen so far. So adjusting, for instance, the eyebrow, maybe scaling it down a little bit to make sure that it follows up with the rest of the eye, um, really paying attention to detail on that sense. And of course, adjusting these little uh, details that don't work so well, such as the eye disappearing. Um, I'm just gonna do those real quick for you guys to see.
And here we go. So I've changed a few things. I've changed notably the eyebrow, uh, a little bit of the curve of the chin over here to make sure that we have a transition that is going to be as smooth as possible. Um, we have a bit of the eye peering over here. Let's make sure that we bring that on the outside so that we don't see it. And pretty much we have our hardest transition for the head here. You can go ahead and do the same thing for the back head. Um, so the one that we'll have over here at frame 50. At this point, it is going to be much easier because you basically just have to transition uh, these little pieces over by rotating, changing the deformation a little bit. So I think we don't necessarily need to spend as much time on that since the hardest part is already taken care of for making some pieces disappear. Um, so let's keep going in the next video. We're just gonna do the body uh, real quick and we'll be able to, uh, to have our full rotation down. We're so close guys, let's just keep going.